Hey guys, I'm T and welcome to the channel. If you're new here, we make trendy and fun crochet tutorials twice a week. And if you haven't already, smash that like button, drop a comment below, and subscribe to join in on the fun. Today I'll be teaching how to make a classic turtleneck vest. As you all know, sleeveless vests are kind of a thing for me, and I know a bunch of you love them too. So here's another business cash affair using a stitch combo we love. Speaking of, if you love crochet fits for your next meeting, you are in the right place. We have hundreds of the most modern crochet tutorials and patterns fit for every occasion with new patterns weekly, so consider clicking the bell to subscribe and you'll never miss an upload. Also, do me a huge favor and give this video a big thumbs up if you like it, or two thumbs down if you don't. Either way, it's a great way to show support so I can keep putting out free tutorials every Wednesday and Sunday. Now, it's time to get on the show, so without further ado. For this project, any category 4 yarn will work, but I used a total of 110 grams of yarn, and that's 210 yards if you're stateside, and as for tools, a 5mm hook, scissors, stitch markers, and a tape measure. There is a written pattern down below. Use offer code TCDDIY for a discount off any $9.99 plus order, and enter this week's pattern giveaway by telling us if you prefer onion rings or french fries. Onion rings are top tier, but I think I'd still have to go with the fries. They're just too good. Details for the giveaway down below. We're using two stitches for this project, and they'll be as follows. Chain. Slip stitch. And single crochet. This tutorial is made for a size small, but you can adjust it for your size and you explain how to in the video, so let's get started. Getting this top started, we're all going to grab our category 4 yarn and make a slip knot. Next, we're all going to grab our 5mm hook and start off by making an even number chain the length that we want for this top to be. So starting at about 1 inch underneath the underarm, and we can make this either cropped or full length. I'd like for mine to be full length. So I'm going to start by making a chain 60, and that's just about 15 inches or 38 centimeters. Now that we have our chain, we're going to do a single crochet row. So let's all start by blocking off that last chain and do a chain 1. Now that chain 1 doesn't count as a stitch, that's our turning chain, and now we're going to put one single crochet into every chain. So into that chain that we blocked off, or the second chain from our hook, we're going to insert, pull through, yarn over, pull through 2, Again, into that next chain, insert, pull through, yarn over, pull through two. Continue with one single crochet into every chain, leaving the last one. So we are back, and our row one is nearly finished. We should have all left our last chain, and into that last chain, we're all going to do an increase of three single crochets. So into that last chain, we're going to insert with one, into that same last chain with a second, and then into that same last chain with a third single crochet. And now from here, we're going to be doing two moss stitch rows. So how we're going to get started on every moss stitch row is we're going to chain one. That does not count as a stitch, that is our turning chain. And then we're going to chain a second chain, so two in total. That second chain is going to count as a chain, and let's flip our work. And how we're going to start off every moss stitch row is by skipping that first stitch, and then into the second, inserting with a single crochet. So skip one into that next single crochet. Now it's a little hard to see, but we should all have a chain space, and then the top of that single crochet, so so far everyone should have two stitches. So that chain space is one, top of that single crochet is two. Let's do this again. Chain one, skip a stitch into the second, a single crochet, so we should all have one, and two chain spaces and a total of four stitches. So making sure that we're counting that first chain space, there's one, two, three, four stitches. And from here, we're going to continue to chain one, skip a stitch, and single crochet into the next until we reach the end of the row. And that last stitch should be a single crochet, since our previous row should have ended on an even number of stitches. I am back, and my first two rows are finished. Now, our row sequence for this piece is going to be a single crochet row, and then two moss stitch rows. So let's get started on our second moss stitch row. Now, like I said in the previous clip, getting started with every moss stitch row, we're always going to start with a chain two. That first chain is not going to count as a chain, that's our turning chain. And then our second chain counts as a chain, and let's flip our work. 
And just like our previous moss to trill, we are going to be skipping that first stitch, which should be the last single crochet that we made for our previous row. And then we're going to single crochet into that following stitch, which should be our chain space. So we're going to skip one into that following stitch, which is our chain space, insert with a single crochet. And all together, we should have one, two stitches. That first stitch is our chain space. Let's do this again. Chain one, skip that following stitch, which is a single crochet from our previous row and single crochet into that next stitch, which is our chain space from our previous row. So insert with one single crochet. And all together, we should have our first chain space, which is our first stitch, single crochet, chain space, next single crochet for a total of four stitches. From here, chain one, skip a stitch and single crochet into the next and continue this to reach the end of the row. We are back in our first one, two, three rows are finished. Now from here, like I said, it's going to be a repeat of these three rows for our underarm portion. But since our row sequence is worked in threes, our single crochet row could start or end with our increases. So let's get started on the following single crochet row, and that should start with an increase. So let's all chain one and flip our work. So into that last stitch, insert with one, with two, and with three single crochets. And from here, just put one single crochet into every stitch. So that is every stitch and every chain space to reach the end of the row. And this row should end on an even number of stitches as well. All right, so we are back and we should all have one, two, three, four rows all finished. Now our two falling rows after this is going to be two moss stitch rows with no increases and no decreases. Then from here, we're gonna continue to repeat our three row repeat, which is a single crochet row, making sure that we increase along the top and then two moss stitch rows with no increases and no decreases. We're gonna continue to repeat these three rows until we have an underarm portion that can reach from mid underarm over to the corner of our underarm, making sure that we all end right after single crochet row that ends with an increase. So it should be an odd numbered single crochet row. Once we have that, I'll meet you back so we can get started on our shoulder. I am back and my underarm portion's all finished. I have a total of seven rows. This width is roughly an inch and a half or four centimeters. And now from here, since we all should have ended along the top, we're all going to make an even number chain that reaches the top of our shoulder. So I have already made my chain. I need roughly four inches or 10 centimeters. So I made a chain 20. So now that we have our chain, we're gonna get started on our falling row in our row sequence, which is going to be a moss stitch row. So how we're gonna get that started is by blocking off that last chain and do a chain two. Now that first chain is gonna count as our turning chain. That second chain is gonna count as our chain. And now we're going to single crochet into the fourth chain from our hook. So we're gonna skip one, skip two. Also skip that third chain, which is that chain that we blocked off. And then into that fourth, insert with a single crochet. And now all together, we should have our first chain space and then our first single crochet. So our first stitch and our second stitch. Again, chain one, skip our following chain and into the next with a single and continue on with our moss stitches till we reach the end of the row. All right, so we are back and we have made our way all the way down with our first shoulder row, which should have been our first moss stitch row. Now, since we're working on the shoulders, we aren't gonna have any increases or decreases to do. So since our following row is a moss stitch row, we're all going to chain two that first chain is going to count as our turning chain. Second chain is going to count as a chain. Skip that first stitch, single crochet into the next, and continue on with our second moss stitch to reach the end of the row. Then the row after that is going to be a single crochet row. Now remember, none of these rows are going to have any increases or decreases. So all we're going to do is continue to repeat these three rows until we have a portion that can reach from mid underarm over to the base of our neck. And I'll meet you back right after our second moss stitch row that ends along the bottom. I am back and my shoulder portion is all finished. Now I have a total of 18 rows. My width is now four inches or 10 centimeters. And now we're gonna get started on our next scoop. So what we're all going to do is insert a stitch marker into any even numbered stitch from the top right where our collarbone is. Now for me, that is the 10th stitch from the top and that's roughly two inches or five centimeters. And I just inserted my stitch marker into there. Now, since we all should have ended along the bottom right after our second moss stitch row, what we're going to do is our single crochet row, making our way all the way up until we reach our stitch marker. So I've made my way all the way up with my single crochet row. 
Now from here, all we're gonna do is our single crochet row, two moss stitch rows working our way across our chest to the other side of the base of our neck with no increases and no decreases. Then I'll meet you back right after we finish up a single crochet row that ends along the top so we can work straight into the shoulder from there. All right, so we are back and we have just finished up the neckline portion. Now for the neckline, I have a total of 37 rows. My width is roughly eight and a half inches or 21 centimeters. Now from here, we're gonna get started on our shoulder. So since we all should have ended along the top, we're all gonna start by making a chain for the same amount of stitches that we skipped when we got started with our neckline. If you have my numbers, I skipped a total of 10 stitches. So over here, I'm going to make a chain 10. After that chain 10 for me, we're gonna chain two. That first chain is gonna be a turning chain. That second chain is going to be our chain. Single crochet into the fourth chain from our hook. And then we're gonna continue on with our two moss and single crochet rows for the same amount of rows that we did for the first shoulder portion. It is going to be an exact repeat of this first shoulder portion. So once we have the same amount of rows, I'll meet you back along the bottom. So I am back and my shoulder portion is now all finished. I now have a total of 48 rows. My width is now 11 and a half inches or 29 centimeters. And now we're gonna finish off our front panel with our underarm. So first things first, we're all going to need to insert our stitch marker into the same amount of chains that we made that led all the way up to the top of our shoulder. For those of you that have my numbers, I made a chain 20. So on this side from the top, I inserted my stitch marker into the 20th stitch. Now we're going to do the following row in our row sequence, which should be a single crochet row. So since we should all be along the bottom, put one single crochet into every stitch until we are three stitches right before our stitch marker. So we are back. We have made our way all the way up with our single crochet row. And we should all have one, two, three stitches left right before our stitch marker. Now from here, we're gonna be doing a decrease of three single crochets. So we're all gonna start by inserting our hook into that following stitch, pull through into that second to last stitch, pull through and then into that last stitch, pull through for four loops on our hook, then yarn over, pull through all four. And our following two rows are going to be moss stitch rows with no increases and no decreases. So go ahead and get those two rows finished up. I'll meet you back right before we get started on our following single crochet row. All right, so we are back and we have just finished up one, two, three rows for our underarm. We're about to get started on our following single crochet row. And then it's going to be a repeat just like how the first underarm portion was. So our following row is a single crochet row. So since we should all be along the top, let's all chain one and flip our work. Now, since we are along the top, it is going to start with a decrease. So insert your hook into that first stitch, pull through into that second stitch, pull through and into that following, pull through for four loops on our hook, then yarn over, pull through all four, then put one single crochet into every stitch. Then we're just gonna continue to repeat these rows. So a single crochet row that has a decrease along the top and then two moss stitch rows with no increases and no decreases until we have the same amount of rows as our first underarm portion. When we do, do a chain of a one and cut. All right, so we are back and the entirety of my front panel is finished. I have a total of 61 rows. My width is now 13 inches or 33 centimeters. And I did do a chain up of one and cut right after my last row. Now, once we have that all finished up, we're going to be making a second identical panel. Once we have the second one all finished up, I'll meet you back so we can seam everything together. All right, so we are back. We now have our front and back panel finished up and now we're ready to seam everything together. So let's place our two panels on top of each other and insert our hook into the bottom corner stitch of both the front and the back panel. Next, we're going to insert our yarn onto our hook, pull through and do a chain one. Now from here, we're gonna do a single crochet seam. So just single crocheting into both the front and the back panel at the same time. So find that first available stitch into the front panel, insert, first available stitch into the back panel, insert, and single crochet them together. Let's do this again. Next stitch into the front panel, insert, next stitch into the back panel, insert, and single, and just once more. Next stitch into the front, Next stitch into the back and single. And we're gonna continue doing this until we don't have any more stitches left to work into. When we don't, do a chain up of one and cut and then repeat on the other side. All right, so we are back. We have just finished up seaming our sides and now we're going to seam our shoulder. So we're gonna make sure that our work is still flipped wrong side out, meaning the seams that we did for the sides are still flipped on the outside. Then we're gonna be inserting our hook into the top corner stitch of both the front and the back panel. 
insert your yarn onto your hook, pull through and do a chain up of one to secure. And now from here, we're just going to do another single crochet seam. So we're gonna be putting one single crochet into every side row. Find the first side row within the front panel, should be a moss stitch row. First side row within the back panel, insert into that top loop, should be another moss stitch row. And then single crochet, let's do this again. This is my following row within the front panel. I'm gonna insert my hook into that top loop. And then also find that next available side row within the back panel, insert and single crochet, and that's it. We're gonna continue doing this until we don't have any more side rows left to work into. When we don't, do a chain up of one and cut and then repeat on the other side. So now that everything is all seamed up, we're ready to get started on our turtleneck portion. We are all first going to need to flip our work right side out, meaning all of our seams are along the inside. And then we're going to be inserting our hook into any one of the stitches or side rows that we have along the neckline. I just inserted my hook into the stitch that I have that's nearest to my shoulder seam. And now we're gonna do a single crochet row. So we're all going to do a chain one and we're gonna find that first available stitch. Just insert your hook in through there. Next stitch and then insert and that's basically it. We're gonna continue doing this, making our way all the way around. Once we reach the side rows that we have within the neckline, we're just gonna be putting one single crochet into each of those. Make your way all the way around and then slip stitch into that chain space and then I will meet you back. So we've made our way all the way around with our single crochet row. We have slip stitched into that chain space and now we're all going to make a chain the length that we'd like for our turtleneck to be, keeping in mind that we will be folding it in half. So I'd like for my full turtleneck length to be roughly six inches or 15 centimeters. So I made a chain of 28. And now that we have our chain, we're going to be doing a slip stitch row. So block off that last chain and do a chain one. Into that chain that we blocked off for the second chain from our hook, go ahead and insert. And when we have those two loops on our hook, what we're going to do is yarn over and gently pull through both of those loops. Now we wanna make sure that we're not tugging too tightly, otherwise the following row can be a little too tight to work into, so let's do that again. Into that following chain, insert, yarn over, pull through two, into that next chain, insert, yarn over, and pull through two. And that's it. We're gonna continue doing this until we don't have any more chains left to work into. So we have made our way all the way down with our first slip stitch row, and now we need to connect it into the base. So we're all gonna start by finding that next available stitch into the base, insert your hook, then yarn over, pull through everything. Now that slip stitch doesn't count as a stitch, that's just to connect it. And we do need to work our way up to the following row, so find that next available stitch into the base, and slip stitch into there as well, and flip our work. And now that our work is flipped, put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. So into the last stitch from our previous row, not those slip stitches into the base, we're gonna insert into that back loop, yarn over, gently pull through everything. Again, into that next stitch's back loop, or the loop that's furthest away from us, insert, yarn over, and pull through everything. That's basically it. We're gonna continue this to reach the end of the row. When we do, chain one, flip our work, and put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch, making our way back down towards the base, and then I'll meet you back just once more. We are back and we should all have one, two, three rows nearly finished and we're just gonna connect it into the base together once more. So all together, let's all start by finding that next available stitch. Insert with a slip stitch, still doesn't count as a stitch, that's just to connect it, then to work our way up to the following row, slip stitch into that next stitch, flip our work and then one back loop slip stitch into every stitch and that's it. We're gonna continue on just like this until we don't have any more stitches left to work into and when we don't, I'll meet you back so we can seam everything together. All right, so we are back. We have made our way all the way around with our back loop slip stitch rows. We don't have any more stitches left to work into, so now let's seam it all together. Now this seam is going to be an outside loop slip stitch seam, so we're gonna make sure that our work is flipped right side out, and then we're gonna be inserting our hook into the corner stitch of both the front and the back panel. We're going to yarn over, pull through everything. Now let's get started by looking at the first available stitch into the front panel, and we're gonna insert only into that front loop. So into that first available stitch, we're gonna insert into that front loop only. Into that next available stitch into the back panel, insert into that back loop only, or the loop that's furthest away from us. When we have those three loops on our hook, just yarn over and pull through all three. Let's do this again. Into that next available stitch into the front panel, insert into that front loop. Next available stitch into the back panel, insert into that back loop, yarn over and pull through everything on our hook. And that's it. We're gonna continue this until we don't have any more stitches left to work into, and when we don't, do a chain up of one and cut.
So we have just finished up seaming our turtleneck and now we're going to finish this piece off by single crocheting along our arm hole to clean it up. So making sure that our work is still flipped right side out, right side up, we are all going to be inserting our hook into the side row that we have that's nearest to our side seam. And all we're going to do is put one single crochet into every side row and then one single crochet into every stitch making my way all the way up and around. So all I'm going to do is insert my yarn onto my hook, pull through, do a chain up of one to secure. And just do the first few together. This is my first side row that I have right here. I'm going to find that top loop, insert my hook, starting with just one single crochet. And then into my following side row, this is mine right here, find that top loop, and insert with one single crochet again. That's basically it. We're just going to continue on with our single crochet row, making our way all the way around. Once we do, slip stitch into that chain space, do a chain up of one and cut, and then repeat on the other side. All right, so we have just finished up both of our single crochet rows along our armholes and we are all done. Last thing we're gonna have to do is just weave in all of our ends. And there you have it. Hope y'all enjoy the tutorial. Join us on Instagram, Pinterest, or Twitter. Those links are down below. And don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Catch y'all the next one, bye.